Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast, episode 773. I'm your surreal Gerald Quinn as I discuss another scintillating, spectacular episode of Snowfall, season four, episode nine, Sleeping Dogs. And in this episode, sleeping, you know, there's a, was the saying, let sleeping dogs lie. That was not the case in this episode. Uh, those those dogs were put to sleep, uh, as we saw over the course of this episode. Um, look at look at the themes uh, of this episode. I I simply had cleaning up, cleaning up. There was a lot of cleaning up going on over the course of this episode. Again, it reminded me, <laughs> reminded me somewhat of. Uh, and I got I got this title from uh, did I say the greatest television uh, show of all time, The Wire. You remember that episode, uh, season one, episode nine, or was episode 12? Yeah, 12, yeah. Uh, I think it was either uh, 11 or 12. I I, I can't remember. They had 13 episodes that season where it was cleaning up and it was called cleaning up. You saw Avon and Stringer kind of tying up loose ends. Well, we saw, we see um Jerome we see Franklin and we see Teddy Teddy Mac tying up a lot of loose ends over this course episode let's get right to it with the best scenes uh we begin where we end it with Franklin Peaches and Tanase that is an I've been struggling with that name all season long but it, I think it is Tanase uh she's explaining herself she lets Franklin know how you know how and why uh, she chose to betray him? Right, that, that man boy put in front of her situation with her brother, and um, through the course of the scene, she amazingly still tries to act if act if uh, she still uh, she still has a has a soft spot for Franklin. Which he, of course, at this point, he's completely not buying when he says, you know, that's, that's a cute little story. Um, he, then he gets a call. He gets a page from Leon. Uh, uh, he gets a page from Leon, tells uh, Peaches to, uh, tells Peaches to um, stay with her. And then we see him head out the door. Uh, again, he... He had no intentions. I I didn't think that he was ever throughout the course of this episode was going to kill her. Uh, was going to kill uh kill her, uh, as we'll see why, and how how he was going to use her for a much bigger, bigger plan. And uh, you know, listen, I can you you know he screams at her saying you should have came to me. Um, listen, Tanase was in a tough spot. You know, your brother's in jail. You are squeezed between these two kingpins in uh, Franklin and also Man Boy, who's, who's a maniac, but a, 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 a carefully organized maniac, not out of control maniac like Scully was. <laughs> we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later in the, in the podcast, the new Scully. Um, but you know, she kind of was in. She kind of had basically had no choice in many ways. You know, brother's in jail. She's vulnerable as far as uh, you know what what man boy can do to her brother um, at any time. And you know, Franklin says you should have came to me. Well, even if she comes to Franklin and lets him know what's going on, remember Franklin has spent most of this season not in a play, not exactly in a position of power as far as soldiers and, and, and what have you. He really hasn't. So I, you know, I, I can't not necessarily blame Tanase for what, for what she did, because, you know, for, for what she did, considering $100,000, keeping her brother safe. Um, you know, I listen, say what you can say what you want about her, but, uh, it, you know, it, it almost worked. Uh, so, she, uh, Franklin lets her live as he goes on, as he would walk out the door to our next scene um, where we have Jerome and Franklin. Jerome and Franklin um, at the, um, 
in the projects. Franklin, of course, is uh, Jerome is, of course, armed for battle, uh, is ready for battle. He left the hospital. He uh, still has a suit on, still had, still had the Easter suit on. And Franklin is trying to desperately convince him to stand down and kind of, uh, and, and, and let's, you know, let's plan this thing out. If we go, if we're going up against man boy, Jerome doesn't want to hear any of it. Says, you know, every time you steer us, you steer us in the wrong direction. Um, of course, every, we know Franklin is right because man boy, uh, Tanase let gave the, uh, let man boy know that Jerome uh, was talking a lot of shit and that they were coming for him. And you remember in, in the previous episode, man boy said, you know, okay, let them come. It's their fun day funeral. So man boy is ready for Jerome. Franklin tries to tell Jerome this, but Franklin, but Jerome is not convinced of this. And then Franklin just gets desperate. Uh, remember, Franklin throughout the course of the season has been physically compromised. He's been within a cane. Listen, he got shot three times. So I'm glad that they did not let that, uh, that they did not kind of like let that, um, let his physical, uh, his physical limitations kind of creep away as the season went along. Like I know a lot of other shows that would have had Franklin walking, walking straight by episode five. No, he got shot three times. He's still physically compromised. Uh, he challenges Jerome to a fight. Um, and I, again, this is, you know, this, this is the genius of Franklin. He knows he can't beat Jerome. He knows he can't beat Jerome. He did, he did, he did get off some good shots, considering how big Jerome is. He got off some good shots, but ultimately he took the L and blood come from his mouth, got knocked down. But it was enough. He did enough to convince Jerome, like, hey, if he's willing to fight you, then that, what, what does that say about the fact that you shouldn't try to pull this move, that he's willing to go this far to try to prevent you from uh, from basically committing suicide yourself by going up against a, a crew that's that's armed and locked and loaded and probably has more soldiers than you and is waiting for you. So this was enough to convince Jerome to back down for at least for now and listen to what Franklin's uh, ultimate plan would um, would be. Um, it was a very, is a very, both actors were tremendous in the scene. Uh, you know, you remember, if you go back to season one, it really was Jerome that introduced Franklin to the drug game. So I, I wonder if that thought caught, if that thought crossed Jerome's mind, saying that I probably helped create this monster. And, you know, Franklin says, hey, you know, when you end up dead, I'm gonna tell your family I did everything I could do to prevent this. So Franklin, I, again, everything Franklin did. Franklin, Franklin at this stage in the season is completely, in terms of mentally, again, physically he's compromised, but mentally he's as sharp as ever. And he, it showed in, in this particular, in this episode. So uh, we see that, um, so Franklin, and uh, so Franklin, Jerome and Tanase, uh, called Man Boy. Uh, they set up the meat. They set up the meat under a bridge. Man Boy isn't isn't not is not completely buying it. Um, is not completely buying it. But they, but again, Jerome. But again, Franklin proves to be ten to be two steps ahead of Man Boy. He anticipated he anticipated that Man Boy would not go would not be uh, would not trust. To not say at this point, or would not would not buy into that story of meeting, would not buy into the uh, to her story of of having him meet man boy, having him meet Franklin under the bridge, and Franklin introducing them to introducing man boy to the plug to, to the uh, to the plug. So man boy comes by uh, man boy along with his three uh, along with three other do his three soldiers stop by, pay to not say a visit. His guys are his, his guys are in the car. He comes up to her apartment by himself, and he immediately, you know, sent, he immediately lets, lets her know. Listen, I, I know you're trying. I know you're, I know you're setting me up. I'm going to kill you. Chokes her, um, pushes her down, chokes her, and you know pulls out his gun. But before before he can before he can obviously pull the trigger, he um, he stabs. She stabs him. And 
you know, you want your wonder, you know, she stabs him um, in the side. He pulls out his gun before he could even pull the trigger. Franklin comes out, shoots him twice. And as he, you know, man boy walks into a, uh, walks into an ambush. Um, I'm telling you, man, it don't pay to be a decoy. <laughs> I'm telling you, as we, as Wanda, well, it, that decoy life is not, is not the life that you want. Because uh, we saw the two, two decoys in this episode come closer than what you want to come, than what you want to come to death, having guns pulled on them. Uh, we'll see Wanda, Wanda later on in this episode, in this, in this episode uh, be used as a decoy. But Franklin held out as long as he possibly could before Man Boy was going to shoot Tanase. Uh, he shoots Man Boy um, and then, you know, basically says, uh, says, look, man, I know, you know, I know how smart you are. I know you wouldn't trust Tanase and wouldn't and trust that meeting under the bridge. Um, says you were always smart, but you never, but not as smart as you think you think you thought you were. Uh, and then man boys like at this point has two bullets in him has a stab wound is basically like fuck it and he's gonna start talking a bunch of shit he just calls out everybody he, he shits on everybody they tells Jerome like look you know you've been letting your nephew run this and you know been, been at his beck and call less Leon says my mom you know could my sister stab your man like a Christmas ham and then he uh tells Franklin you know uh, tells Franklin that um, well tells uh, tell you know tells Franklin you know Jerome basically and and Leon that you know this you know tells Franklin you're not gonna make it out of this so uh, man boy got his money's worth he went out like a G and he got his money's worth in regards to listen I'm gonna die I'm just gonna talk as much shit as possible before I die matter of fact. He tells Franklin, you know, take my life. And then <clears throat> you see Franklin shoot him in the throat. Uh, via, you know, this kind of reminded me of in, uh, Bulwark Empire when uh, Mickey Doyle got shot in the throat, shot in the throat by Lucky Luciano because he couldn't, you know, keep his mouth shut. Uh, so he shoots, shoots Man Boy in the throat, finishes him off, and then has Khadij, excuse me, Tanase. Make it seem, make it seem like Tanase uh, shot Man Boy, and um, as a you know, make it seem like she gives Tanase the gun to have her prints on it, and tells gives her a story to tell as far as Man Boy being a burglar, uh, and that would of course be a you know self defense justifiable homicide. Of course, the cops could care probably, would probably care less about another black man being shot in you know in the projects. Um, and tells her, you know, in regards to, and, and of course we see Jerome, before Jerome enters the building, enters her apartment, we see Jerome and Peaches take out three of Man Boy's guys with Uzis. Jerome now has turned into the uh, motherfucking Terminator, <laughs> to say at least Jerome in this episode was, you know, was ready to kill, was ready to kill at every turn. So they take out Man Boy's peoples, Man Boy is out of the mix. I'll talk more later, more later about the man boy character really just brilliantly played by melvin Gregg jr um uh you know just a ter terrific uh, performance by him so we get to khadijah and scully khadijah word gets by gets back to khadijah that man boy has been killed so she um she uh ups the bounty on uh she ups the bounty on Leon and Franklin calls um she calls Dallas and Black Diamond the two the two uh two stripper her two hitters and ups that bounty she also hits Scully with an ashtray as Scully has turned into a reformed Christian where you know he basically turned into a housewife uh Mr. Mom like Scully, Scully is up there, you know, buying groceries, getting groceries, putting up groceries, complaining to Khadijah about, you know, why you didn't get the, the name brand. I mean, Scully hasn't touched a gun, hasn't touched drugs in about five episodes. So she's like, she hits him, he, she's basically calling him soft, says, you know, you know, tells her, he tells her, you got to get that hate out your heart. Uh, and basically they're like, she's like, um, you know, you're not with, you know, she basically, he basically says, uh, she says, you gotta get that. She says that, uh, he says, you gotta get that hate out your heart. 
and they at this point are clearly uh, not on the same page. Um, as she is in her, you know, her murder, you know, she's in complete in, in, in total murder mode and revenge mode, while Scully ha again is just kind of, you know, scaled back. Scully is is calm now. He, he's not getting high, buying groceries. I mean, you know, he's putting cleaning up the house. <laughs> like the, the the character arc of Scully in this season has been it's just been remarkable. It has been phenomenal, remarkable. I've never I've never seen a character arc like this within a season of such a hardened criminal kingpin now reformed in the same. I, I just never seen anything like this. So it, it's been fascinating to watch episode episode in and episode out uh, what they're doing with the Scully character. So we get to Franklin Black Diamond, uh, Franklin Dallas Black Diamond, Wanda and Jerome. So uh, Wanda, Wanda, of course, it was used as a decoy she comes into uh, the strip club. She tells Black Diamond in in, uh, in Dallas, "I know, I know where Leon's at. Um, I know where Leon's at. I want revenge on Leon because he, you know, he let her go after she took a bullet for him. And by the way, it was a perfect story. It was a perfect. It was a. It was a uh, convincing story. Like." And we and we know Dallas and Black Diamond are not the brightest. They're just hired guns. They're not they're not thinking on that type of level of being set up. They they just they just want the money. They are hired guns to say the least. So they fall for the trick. They fall for uh, Wanda's bait for the bait. Um. So they fall for the bait. They're met up by Jerome and uh they're met up by Jerome and Franklin and you know Wanda has is. At this point, they put a, one of them puts a gun to Wanda's head. Franklin is able to, to talk them out of it in terms of making a deal with them, saying, "Listen, y'all are basically hired hands. We want to make you full time employees. Uh, we, you know, have all the money in the world. In, in Franklin's words, more money than God." And they he, t he tosses a, a, a knot a, a knot of cash on the car towards them, and they are officially, you know, listen. They're not. They're loyal to the money. Like they, you know, they're Khadija, they're they are the type, they're not close to Khadija, they're close to Khadija based on the money that she's paying. So these girls are not like it wasn't a situation where they uh, you know uh, had any loyalty towards Khadija. They were loyal to the money that Khadija was paying them. So they betrayed Khadija. And now uh we'll we'll see how that plays out. So we get to Irene and Alton, Alton at the radio station. So even after a threat, even after being threatened by Franklin, even after being, you know, put to sleep by Teddy at uh, in the last episode, Irene just will not will will not shut up. She goes to a radio station and she spews out her story and the contents of her story over the radio station. Alton has, of course, has a connection with one of his with one of the ex. Panthers who have this radio, who have this radio, uh, this radio gig and uh, this this radio this radio show, and you know she and of course, of course Teddy Mac, and along with uh, Gustavo hears this, and this enrages him. But uh, listen, Irene absolutely you know, absolutely just had it coming. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. Uh, she just can't shut up, and. Uh, you know, we'll see what this what this led. We'll we'll talk about what this leads to. So, um, Franklin, Leon, Jerome, Khadija, da Dallas, Black Diamond. Um, they call to Khadija. Uh, Black Diamond and Dallas call Khadija, tell to, and to let her know that they got Leon. Um, she uh, Khadija pulls out you know pulls out the gun, you know strap straps up. <clears throat> tells you know she tells Scully like hey let's go Scully's like nah Scully's like uh you know basically refuses and says and then Khadija makes a threat to her and so towards him saying look if you're not down with this then we don't have anything else to talk about basically so she gives him basically a a you know uh, just basically threatens him with basically leaving him or not dealing with him and at this point, it, it, it seemingly like Khadija is running, is calling the shots. Now maybe she's not running the business in terms of street business and drug deals and stuff like that in terms of Scully's business. But as far as running 
as far as in terms of, of, of who is wearing the pants in the house, it is without question Kadisha at this point. So she leaves her place and heads to uh, heads to a trap. Uh, she walks into the door, uh, walks into a, walks into the room. She's uh, Leon, uh, hands behind his back, and then of course we see uh, Franklin and Franklin. We see Franklin and Jerome come out. Franklin and Jerome come in, and of course at this point she knows it's a trap. And Leon. Now before everything anything pops off, you see Leon again apologize directly towards her about her daughter, about killing her daughter. And of course we know it was you know we know that. Leon has still been haunted all season about the killing of, of you know of a five year old, and you know in this moment, uh, Khadija's like, look, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to haunt you forever. And Leon's basically begging her, listen, I'm trying to give you an out here. And she says, you know, basically says no. There's there's no negotiation and then bam you have Jerome putting a bullet in her back Leon was kind of taken back Leon was kind of surprised like I don't know if Leon uh expected him to, to kill her I thought I think Leon went in Leon I mean of course Franklin and Jerome from the start of the episode uh knew they were going to kill her or, or had planned to kill her once they once they uh you know once and by the way uh this idea came, the idea to use her peoples against her came from uh, Louis in the hospital. So Franklin got this, this, this idea from Louis in the hospital. So Jerome and Franklin completely uh, expected to kill Khadijah. I think Leon came in hoping that she would take a deal as far as uh, maybe money, compensation for money, uh, and just and, and, and take a way out of this. I'm not sure if Khadija says, you know what, I'll, you know, I'll take out, I'll, I'll, you know, the bounty's done, and but give me. I'm not sure if they would, if if, if Jerome and Franklin were ever consider, were ever going to consider letting her walk away in spite of this. I just think, I think at this point we were past the point of no return. I mean, he's killed. Listen, they've killed her brother and her daughter. You know, accident, accident or not, like, that, and they, and they are mortal enemies to her, to her boyfriend. They're still enemies of Scully, even though Scully has kind of you know went into Mr. Mom mode. So I, I don't, I, I don't ever envision a scenario where Khadija was going to live, um, was going to live in, uh, was was going to be able to, uh, they were going to be able to come to some type of agreement and Khadija lives. I, I just didn't see that happening. So. Khadija gets shot in the back. Um, we see that, um, of course, we see that Scully, you know, identifies her at the morgue. Um, so I, I think that we is certainly, the, to me, I, I feel like they're gonna move this plot line into season five. I, I don't, I don't see. I, based on the previews of of, of next episode, I I don't think. Scully will play a major role um, in, in terms of the next episode. We'll, and we'll talk more about that. So we go to Irene and Teddy at the bar. Um, Teddy says his goodbye to Gustavo. Says, um, it seems like, and it was kind of a little bit unclear. I don't know if he, if Teddy is on, a, or is on the outs of the CIA, um, but that is all, there's some indication that Teddy, you know, that, that they've done something that Teddy's suspended or some, something to where that he's disconnected from CIA. Now, I don't think he's completely on the outs on the, uh, in terms of the CIA. So, uh, but he says his goodbyes to Gustavo, tells Gustavo, look, you know, take it easy. Um, and we see Teddy go to the bar, meet Irene at the bar. And we see, and he comes, tells Irene, like, look, does him like tells Irene, I'm ready to talk. Uh, fuck the fuck the CIA. Where you have the tape recorder on you, and you know she pulls out the tape recorder, and she you know she basically says, uh, and the minute 
the minute he says, I need a drink, then it's, you knew what time it was. So he goes to the bar, gets two drinks. Now, we don't see, we don't see him put something in the drink, but I'm going to say that he, I'm going to assume that he drugged that drink. But they go back to the bar. He starts spilling, you know, all the tea as far as what's going on and his position and things of that nature starting to start in 1983 and, and all that, the, the tape is on, they get drunk. Um, Irene drives and uh, we see Irene drive, um, we see Irene drive and crash the car and we see Teddy, Teddy, uh, she falls asleep at the wheel, she crashes into a, into a truck and she's still alive still alive but uh teddy suffocates her and pop you no know, takes the takes the tape recorder and then uh plants pills in her bag as to as to you know make it seem like as she make it seem like she mixed alcohol with drugs and of course by the way and by the way she's an alcoholic anyway so um i'm certainly through i'm sure through investigations that that you know the fact that it's not going to be a shot that she got into an accident, drunk and driving. Considering I'm, I'm sure she has had a has a reputation for drink for being a heavy drinker, regardless. So it kind of it kind of fits perfectly for uh, Teddy from that standpoint. Listen, there there was no way when he was going to let Irene live. Um, Teddy again is in pure scramble mode at this point. Um, his mission has, you know, the mission in Nicaragua, of course, has been compromised. He had a conversation with conversation with Avi. Avi basically says, listen, there'll be other wars, other missions. You need to kind of, you know, regroup um, and kind of like almost quit while you're, you know, not ahead, but almost kind of just, just kind of take a step back. And, you know, Teddy says, yeah, I'm leaving. I just got one more thing to do. Um, so that was a, that was also a scene between those two. So we go to Franklin and Teddy at the hospital. And basically, you know, Franklin, uh, Teddy asked Franklin about it, you know, his father. Um, this is right before his he basically kicked his father out the hospital for visiting, uh, for visiting uh his visiting sissy. Um, and of course, Alton, yes, Alton is still in town. He has not left to Cuba yet. But uh, and also there was another scene that showed Alton as soon as Alton saw the news about uh, Irene that he was packing up that he was packing up and left left out the room quickly. Um, but Franklin and Teddy are at the hospital and mainly the discussion is about Franklin's uh, about what are we going to do about your father, and that's what and basically the episode wraps up. Um, that question, and of course, that is going to, without que without question, drive the um, the season finale. Um, as far as themes, again, cleaning up, uh, we saw Franklin, Teddy, and Jerome just, you know, you know, tie up some loose ends and basically, uh, basically get rid of some things, get rid of get rid of some people that, uh, you know. That had been their nemesis throughout the course of, of 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 this of this of this season in terms of Khadija, Man Boy, and also Irene, um, Teddy and Gustavo part ways. We talked about that. Uh, rest in peace, Man Boy and Khadija, two great villains. I mean, as a brother, as a especially as a brother and sister. I mean, has there ever has there has there ever been a better brother sister villain? villains in on television in recent memory I, I can't think of them i cannot think of a better brother sister villains i mean these you know it's really you know these two actors were brilliant i don't know the, i don't know who plays khadija i, I keep i forget I get her name melvin of course melvin greg jr plays man boy but it just goes to show you you know it's really a sad story considering what they grew up into and basically these are two characters who had who were born into the game, who were born into violence, born into the into the gang culture, born into they had no choice, they had zero choice, and we saw we see what comes out of it, and we see the cost of you know 
of the of their of their particular choices and decisions. You know, Khadija loses her daughter, loses her brother, then of course, you know, loses her own life, loses her own life. Uh, so, from that standpoint, um, again, these two characters were great characters. Uh, you almost hate that they had to kill him, but they had to go. They, there is no way that you can continue, their storylines could, could continue into season five and, and have it make sense. So these are two characters that had to go um, again, but two great characters, wonderful performances by the the uh, respective actors, um, respective actors, especially especially Man Boy. Um, you know that character, that guy uh, Melvin Gregg certainly is going to get some more work. Uh, all coming off this uh, performance over the past uh, couple of seasons. Um, so MVP, Franklin and Jerome, I think that that scene alone uh, was a was a MVP performance. Uh, Franklin could be MVP every episode, you know, uh, that he's, you know, Damson Ildris is just that good. But Jerome, I, you know, I meant to give Jerome MVP last episode. So this is kind of a makeup MVP. But Jerome, again, Jerome is in, now turned into the Terminator. And that scene, you know, embodied their, that scene where they get into a fight, kind of embodied their relationship. But you, you kind of get a sense that Jerome has been wanting to fight Franklin for a long time now, uh, especially after he found out what they had been, what through Louis, when they went to Arkansas, what they are, what they were in, what, what they were involved with with the CIA, that Franklin had kind of been hiding from him. Uh, you saw him last episode say, tell Leon, you know, fuck Franklin. So this kind of was a build up towards towards that, and of course Franklin is going to do you know basically takes an ass whooping to in order to protect his uncle. Uh, so it is uh, that the, the, these two were the MVP uh, without question. There was also one scene I left out that I, I now it's come to my mind. It was a scene between Sissy and Jerome that also could have been under best scenes. Um, basically, and basically the kind you know, Sissy says, I, you know, you're my brother. I don't want to say anything happen to you. And Jerome basically says, you know, I, basically we're at the point of no return. I'm at the, I'm at like, this, this is it. We, we are in, we in this, <laughs> there's no, there's no turning back. So that was a, a poignant scene between those two characters who have gone through a lot as brother and sister and who, who has spent a lot, who have spent you know, parts of, of this of this series on opposite sides of the fence, especially, you know, having, you know, especially with the direction that Franklin has gone into during the, during this series. Um, so that is the episode. Um, again, the series finale is seemingly, that's going, not the series finale, because there's a season five, the season finale um, is going to, it's called, uh, fight or flight. So I'm, I'm assuming, you know, that is the question of, you know, you know Franklin, will Franklin fight uh, Teddy Mac or will he, you know, choose to run away and leave or, or they're speaking for Alton. It's, it's going to be, that episode is going, next week's episode will be a Frank, will be a Franklin, Teddy, Alton, Alton episode. And every all the indications from the previews indicates indicates that Alton and Teddy are going to be going at it, and Franklin's going to be kind of caught in the middle, in the middle of this. And we can and listen. Uh, he's, he's going to he's going to choose his father over uh, Teddy Mac. Um, so it'll be. I, listen, they might. I, I don't know what's going to happen in that next in that episode. Um, should be a spectacular episode, but this episode was a, a this episode was legitimately legitimately a top five uh, Snowfall episode of all time. Yeah, I did want to address one thing. I saw something on Twitter last night that was disturbing, disturbing to say the least. And people, we are in a microwave, live in the moment culture where we just started talking out, of, just, just, we'll just start talking out of our asses when we uh, see a, when, when we see something that we like in terms of a great show or even in sports. I saw someone, you know, Mal, Mal, formerly of the Joe Button podcast, and I'm not, it's not taking shots, but he's no longer with the Joe Button podcast, posted saying that he thought that Snowfall was better than The Wire. And that just set Twitter ablaze. I mean, people did that, brought out people, the Wire Nation. They, I didn't know there was a Wire Nation. If you didn't think that it was a Wire Nation, the Wire Nation came out in full 
splendor last night, early this morning, with that comment. Um, and it, listen, I, I just did a podcast. I just did a podcast with uh, in terms of the Wire remix and we we we, we watched the Wire. There's no comparison between Snowfall and the Wire. Is zero. Is not just the wire. Is the greatest television show of all time. It's not even close, in my opinion. Um, you kind of you kind of disrespect Snowfall it, when you make that type of comparison. You kind of take away from Snowfall. Let's just celebrate Snowfall for being right now the best show on television. Is Snowfall better than Power? Absolutely, and I love Power, but it's not even that's not even close. It's a far superior show to Power. So if I want to make those comparisons, then go ahead. But this is a far superior. Show. Far superior show to power, but as far as comparing it to like a Breaking Bad, no, it's not. Not comparing it to uh, The Wire, no. Like you know, writing performances, story arcs, things of that nature. Like no, I'm sorry, and I let. And listen, I love you know, I love this show. I'm doing doing a podcast on this show weekly. That tells you what where I think about this show. But uh, let, let's not. Yeah, come on. Let, let's let's not do that. Let's, let's not make that comparison. That's going to wrap it up for this latest edition of the Real Deal Podcast. This podcast will be up as soon as possible. Have a great, great rest of your evening. I'll see you next time.